The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to Distance Education. I am Gembo Pamela Ancho, your citizenship education teacher in the class of Form 3. Today, before we move into R, we move on to the next lesson. Let us look at the assignment we separated with last class. The task was give two differences between traditional marriage and civil marriage. Two differences between traditional marriage and civil marriage. The two differences are traditional marriage is conducted according to customs and traditions, while civil marriage is conducted according to state laws. Another is that traditional marriage is marked by the handing of the bride, the bride wealth to the bride's family, while the civil marriage is marked by the signing of the marriage certificate. So with that said, let us move on to lesson nine, which is a lesson of the day. The title of the lesson, Forms of Family Protection in Cameroon. Forms of Family Protection in Cameroon. And this is the plan of the lesson. We shall begin with previous knowledge. We'll move on to learning objectives, real life situation. We'll carry out learning activities and application exercises. And we shall end this lesson with an assignment. With that said, before, in, in our last class, we listed the components of the family and we explained the types of marriages. This, this knowledge on the components of the family and the types of marriages is very useful in this lesson of today, forms of family protection in Cameroon. So we expect that at the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify the various institutions of family protection and also list the measures of family protection. So as the lesson unfolds, you should identify the various institutions of family protection and equally list the measures of family protection. With that said, let us consider this situation in real life. You read with me, your aunt is only married traditionally to her husband for 18 years, with whom she has four children. The husband is critically sick, and his people are threatening to dispossess her of their family business. Let's take it all over again. You reflect as we read. Your aunt is only married traditionally to her husband for 18 years, with whom she has four children. The husband is critically sick, and his people are threatening to dispossess her of their family business. How can your aunt have her situation redressed? How can your aunt have her situation redressed? So as this lesson, forms of family protection in Cameroon unfold, you should 
Look for an answer. You should provide an answer to this question. How can your aunt have her situation redressed? With that said, let us look, up, look at document one, which is actually the first step into our lesson. Document one is a text. You read with me. It, at particular times of the year, members of a family come together. At, so, at, such, at such family reunions, the issues that concern the family are tabled, discussed, and resolutions are taken. Such meetings are usually organized by the elders of the family. With such efforts, the spirit of togetherness prevails inside the family at all times. Now let's look at the questions before we come back to the document. From the document, bring out the advantages of family reunions. Second question, give the synonym of family reunion. And the third question, name two family elders who usually organize family reunions. So as we get, we start answering from question one, from the document, bring out the advantages of family reunions. Let's get back to our document and look at the advantages of family reunion. At particular times of the year, members of a given family come together at, at such family reunions, the issues that concern the family are tabled, discussed, and resolutions are taken. Such meetings are usually organized by the elders of the family. With such efforts, the spirit of togetherness prevails inside the family at all times. Now the question from the document bring out the advantages of family reunions. The first advantage is that it is a forum where family issues are discussed and resolved. It provides family members to meet it permits family members to meet one another, and it makes the family to live with the spirit of togetherness. We saw all this in the text. The second question, give the synonym of family reunion. In the text, this word family reunion, at particular times of the year, members of a family come together. At such, at such family reunions, the issue that concerns the family at table discussed and resolutions are taken. The question says we should give a synonym to family reunions. A synonym to family reunion, family meeting. Oh, it, that is the synonym to family reunion. And the third question says name two family elders who usually organize family reunions. Name two family elders who usually organize family reunions. We have the grandfather, we have the uncle. The uncle may be the successor of the grandfather, or he may just be an influential uncle who is like the family head. So family reunions are organized by grandfather or the uncle, that is the family head. Now let's look at family meetings. How family meetings promote and protect families in Cameroon. In the family meeting promotes familiarity amongst family members. It promotes respect for the elderly in the, within the family. It, cr it creates opportunities for family education. That is educating children on family values, family traditions. It equally promotes love and solidarity among family members. And in the family meetings, it is equally a place where conflicts among family members are resolved, or conflicts between families are resolved. We equally have collective effort is encouraged through family meetings. In, in family meetings, the, the members can carry out joint projects 
build family houses, electrify family houses, and do other, carry out other collective activities. Family meetings equally safeguard family property. When they, when uh, family reunions, during family reunions, they discuss on family property and investment and how to protect family property and investment. So let's look at this document. Social Affairs Departments are set up, operated under the Ministry of Social Affairs to resolve family issues. The Ministry of Women Empowerment and the Family is put in place to check the abuse of women's rights. The government also pays family allowance to its workers. The court is the last resort whenever there is a family disagreement. The extra continues. The whole, the rule of the court is to discharge justice with a moral bias for family protection. This is why cases concerning divorce take much time before verdicts are pronounced. It, it's important to note that the marriage certificate has helped in protecting families. Now let's look at the questions before we get back to our document. Question one, identify three government bodies in document two that work for the well-being of the family. Question two, pick out an example of a family issue resolved by these bodies. Question three, pick out the strategies that are used by the government to foster family unity. And question four, why do you think the government has taken all these measures to protect the family? The first question says, you should identify three government bodies in document two that work for the well-being of the family. So as we read through, you should identify these three government bodies that work for the well-being of the family. So let's start from the beginning. Social affairs departments are set up, operated under the Ministry of Social Affairs to resolve family issues. The Ministry of Women Empowerment and the Family is put in place to check the abuses of women's rights. The government also pays family allowance to its workers. The court is the last resort whenever there is a family disagreement. The role of the court is to discharge justice with a moral bias for family protection. There, this is why cases concerning divorce take much time before verdicts are pronounced. It's important to note that the marriage certificate has helped in protecting families. So from the reading, we have, we have identified three government bodies in the document that work for the well-being of the family. And these are those bodies, the Ministry of Social Affairs, the Ministry of Women, Empowerment, and the Family. We have the law court. So these are three government bodies that protect the family. Question two, pick out an example of a family issue resolved by these bodies. An example of a family issue resolved by this body. We say the court is the last resort whenever there is a family disagreement. And it continues to say the role of the, the, role of the court is to discharge justice with a moral bias for family protection. That is why cases concerning divorce take much time before verdicts are pronounced. It's important to note that the marriage certificate has helped in protecting families. So it is divorce. So the court of law prolonged the process of divorce in order to discourage those concerned. Now the, the third question, Pick out the strategies that are used by the government to foster family unity. 
strategies used by the government to foster family unity. Resolving family matters amicably. Checking abuse of women's and children's rights. Paying family allowance to parents, rendering the process of divorce long. So these are some of the strategies that the government is using to foster family unity. And the fourth question say, why do you think the government has taken all these measures to protect the family? Why are these me measures necessary to protect the family? This is because the family is the basic, the basic unit of the society. We can't talk of the society without the family. The society starts with the family. So if the family is destroyed, the society will eventually be destroyed. So a good, a morally upright society starts with moral upright families. Now, let's look at the role of government in family protection. The role of the government in family protection. Remember, we are talking about the Cameroon government because the lesson is forms of family protection in Cameroon. The first role is creation, the creation of the Ministry of Social Affairs to handle conflicts between spouses. The creation of the Ministry of Women Empowerment and the family to prevent abuses of women and women and children's rights. Payment of family allowance to working parents. We equally have the establishment of marriage certificates. From time to time, we always hear that the Ministry of Social Affairs is organizing a mass, a mass uh, 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 issuing of marriage certificates to couples that have been living together without any legal document binding their unions. Issuance of birth certificates. They equally issue birth, uh, birth certificates are equally issued by the, the by the different councils to identify the children that are born within council areas. Upholding of the principle of family union in public service transfers. There are transfers. Uh, married people are transferred to me, either to meet their spouses or the spouses are transferred to meet the other partners. So there's what we call regrouping of families in transfers. They bring married people together. Giving enough time for reconciliation before divorce is granted. We saw it in the document that the that, the, that the, the, the court of law does not easily pronounce uh, divorce when it is taken to court because they want to give them enough time for reconciliation. So they handle it using the law, but at the same time, give advice to the spouses or with the hope that they could reconcile. Now let's look at this document. NGOs are formed by persons who have the aim to improve on the well-being of human beings. They are not for profit making and very often operate at international level. They organize seminars to spread ideas in favor of a better family life. A good example is the Cameroon National Association of Family Welfare, CAMNA4 which educates parents on family planning and family health. Now let's consider these questions before we get back to our document. Give the full meaning of NGOs as used in document three. Question two, explain what you understand by the family planning and state how it protects the family, and state how it protects the family. Explain what you understand by family planning and state how it protects the family. Let's read the document before we consider, we, before we start answering the question. NGOs are formed by persons who have the aim to improve on the well-being of human beings. They are not for profit making and very often operate at international level. They organize seminars 
to spread ideas in favor of a better family life. A good example is the Cameroon National Association for Family Welfare, which Camna for, which educates parents on family planning and family health. Now, the, the first question, give the full meaning of NGOs as used in document three. NGO stands for non-governmental organizations. NGO stands for non-governmental organizations. And question two, explain what you understand by family planning and state how it protects the family. Let's look at the extract. Let's go back to our extract so that we can understand what is meant by family planning. See, a good example is the, no, let's start from, NGOs are formed by persons who have the aim to improve on the well-being of human beings. They are not for profit making and very often operate in international, at international level. They organize seminars to spread ideas in favor of a better family life. A good example is the Cameroon National Association of for Family Welfare, CAMNA, for which educates parents on family planning and family health. So what is family planning as stated and how does it protect the family? Family planning is the practice of controlling the number and spacing of children for a couple. And family planning enables the couple to bear children at the rate at which they can conveniently take care of the children. It means they are the children, they, they can provide health, shelter, they can provide education for those children. Now let's look at the role of non-governmental organizations in the promotion, in the protection of families. Non-governmental organizations are non-profit organizations created for human well-being. They protect the family through the organization of seminars on family health, publication of documents on better family life. They equally facilitate access to family planning and health facilities for families. They provide health packages to families. They offer support to family members whose rights are violated. So we equally have some of these non-governmental organizations that militate to protect the rights of individual members of the family, especially widows and orphans. We have NGOs like Save the Orphan Foundations, Save the, Women, the Widows Foundations, which are there to protect and to fight for the rights of orphans and widows. With the NGOs equally uh, uh, carry out same uh, schemes through which family revenue can be improved. They carry out free education on improved agriculture and other activities. They equally train, uh, especially women, on some other activities apart from agriculture that can bring in, that can increase their family budget. So uh, NGOs, equally militate in the economic life of the family to ensure that the economic standard of the family increases. Now let's go through this document and look at some questions. Groups of Christians or Muslims usually come together to discuss issues that concern the family. During such meetings, resource persons give lectures on how to live a good life with one's family. Most often, the lessons learned are made with reference to the Holy Bible and Holy Quran. An example of such groups include the marriage encounter groups. With their support, most families have improved on their ways of life. Now let's consider these questions. From document four, explain what you understand by resource person. Next question, give two important teachings of the Holy Bible and the Quran that foster family unity. Say so from document four, explain what you understand by resource 
person. And you give two important teachings of the Holy Bible and Holy Quran that foster unity. So as I read, you should be able to identify the answers. Groups of Christians or Muslims usually come together to discuss issues that concern the family. During such meetings, resource persons give lectures on how to live a good life with one's family. Most often, the lessons learned are made with reference to the Holy Bible and Holy Quran. An example of such groups include the marriage encounter groups. With their support, most families have improved on their ways of life. Now, they say from document 4, explain what you understand by resource person. A resource person is someone who has expertise in a certain area and who may be called upon to perform a task or provide information as need be, as need, as need be. So if he's a consultant in a particular domain, somebody that can be called upon to give clarification, advice, or to help in decision making. And the next question says, give two important teachings of the Holy Bible and the Holy Quran that foster family unity. Two important teachings. The Holy Quran and the Holy Bible teaches love and forgiveness. Love and forgiveness can foster and can protect the family. Let's look at the contributions of religious groups in the protection of the family. Religious groups often organize counseling sessions to discuss family issues. They organize visits to celebrate family events. They equally use religious doctrine to promote love and forgiveness to prevent and better manage family disputes. They serve as a forum for resource persons to sensitize the public on a healthy family. Other measures of family protection include the promotion of family or formal marriages, that is marriage that has gone through the traditional marriage, the court marriage, and has, and has obtained a marriage certificate. The, the, the union is legalized. Facilitating children adopt, child, facilitating child adoption for couples that don't have a child. Recognizing children born out of wedlock. And the preamble of the constitution resolves to protect and to promote the family. So these are other measures of family protection. Even the penal code outlaws infidelity in order to protect the family. So family matters reported to traditional authorities are settled peacefully in favor of family unity. They don't levy blame on one person in order to ensure that both parties, when they are leaving, they go home satisfied. Now, look at, let's consider this application exercise. What do you think the family needs to be, why do you think the family needs to be protected from falling apart? Why do you think the family needs to be protected from falling apart so that the, the, the husband does not take a different direction, the children another direction, and the mother another direction? These are some of the reasons why family protection is very important. The stability of all families is important for peace in the society. Remember we said the family is the basic unit of the society. A stable family inculcates values which can easily differentiate between right and wrong in their children. And stable families bring up responsible citizens and the society needs responsible citizens. The family teaches the younger members the customs, the tradition, and culture of the society. So the, fami the, the, the family is the first school that children attend before going out for other academic work. 
So this is the assignment you do in preparation for next class. State two things that should be done by family members to keep the family united. Two things that should be done by family members to keep the family united. So you can consult these test books or you go online and carry out some research to answer, to provide a response to the assignment. With that said, we've come to the end of our lesson for today on the forms of family protection in Cameroon. Our next lesson will be on the fundamental notions, characteristics, and types of villages in Cameroon. Una tege si matege yop, una tege minga matege nyum, una tege majang matege ndom, mane tambia niña ne injubiayen, gani bana matege mot, gani la kiri watege ndom, esa kina bia dinkido, mane tambia niña ne injubiayen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tam atonge tam zabike tam 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 amote tam zabike mane tambia niña ne injubiayen